Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Happy July. For those that are tuning in live, good morning. For those that are watching anytime during the day, hope whatever you're doing, it's successful and you're having a great day. We've been talking a lot about this idea of, of change. The past week or so, we talked about the why of change. Now we're getting into the world of how of change and what change is. It's not having to override your system to do what you, what you think you should be doing when you don't want to do it. That's not change. That's the first step of change. But the process, the goal of change is to actually change. It's to be different. When you change your clothing, you're wearing new clothing. There may be a process from taking off what you have to putting on what you want. But at some point, you're wearing new clothing. Well, when you're changing your life, at some point, you have a new life. It's not like an entirely new life, but there are nuances that are different. What we've been talking about earlier this week is this idea that the resource that we have to change is willpower. And we misuse it. We misunderstand it. We think that the reason why we're not more is because of willpower. What we don't appreciate is that willpower is a finite resource. And we're never going to have enough willpower to change our lives. Like, unless you're part of the, the elite few, you know, that were gifted with some incredible amount of willpower, a normal human being doesn't have enough natural willpower to change his or her life on a dime. Just like a natural human being can't get down and do a thousand push-ups or just walk outside their house and run a marathon. That's just not how it works. The way it works is you grow towards it. You have the potential and now we got to put in the work. That's the great partnership between us and the divine, right? He gives us the potential to do it, but he's not going to hand it to us because then it wouldn't be much of an accomplishment. The accomplishment is, is the journey. If we're not careful with our willpower, if we just indiscriminately give it out to everything, everyone and everything, we have very little left for us. We have very little left for things to do. If at the end of the day, you finally start to get to things you need to do during the day, you end up not doing much. And a lot of times the reason why we're not more successful is because, because we're not clear with where we're going, right? Which was a few weeks ago, vision. We don't really have that impetus to get there because we haven't taken the time to think, to create a vision, to see something that isn't there. There's no excitement to change. We end up changing in reaction to things like the typical you know, husband who's sitting at the meal and he takes his third portion and or I should say the stereotypical husband that's sitting at the meal and he takes his third portion and his wife like pulls it away from him, right? Like what, what was that? Right? She's trying to make him healthy. He doesn't want to be healthy because he hasn't seen it. He goes to the doctor and the doctor goes, if you don't lose X amount of weight, your cholesterol's too high. And then he's got to react to circumstances that he doesn't want to react to, but he has no choice. So how can you change that way? We're the same way. We like what we're doing. Or else we wouldn't be doing it. Even if we're not happy with the results, we are either like it because we really like it or we've just been conditioned to like it, but we're waiting for the world to, to, to give us some information, to take away the plate, so to speak, so that we can change. That's not really change. That's not, re that's not proactive change. So if we don't take the time to create a vision for where we want to go, if we don't take the time to journal, to write, to think, to understand ourselves, we're not going to have the impetus to go down and do things which is why we drop things all the time. But once we do, now we at least can take all that willpower and say, okay, I'd love to get involved in this conversation that's going to go nowhere about two people that really doesn't matter at the end of the day. I'd love that, but I can't. Of course, I'd love to expend energy in the morning when I'm on the train watching about sports games in which I have no financial interest or any other interest because it's not even my favorite teams. I'm just bored. And now I'm like invested in this thing, but I can't. I got too much to do during my day. I got to now create a guardian of the gate. 
and protect my willpower because I know that the most valuable resource I have during my day is my willpower. And if I use it in ways that is not productive, I'm not going to have enough when I got to do things that I got to do. For a lot of us, we don't want to do things that are hard. So we put it on a list to make us feel like we know it's there. And then we keep on doing the easy stuff. And by the time we get to the hard stuff, we've got nothing left. So we punt it to the morning. And then we punt it to the end of the week. And then we punt it to the next week. And we keep on punting it until one day it blows up in our face. And then we tell ourselves, I wish I would have done that earlier. So we call the proverbial toothache. This happens in businesses, this happens everywhere in life. Someone has a toothache and like, it's annoying. You got to go to the dentist who wants to go to the dentist and you can and you can and, and then it goes away. And you're like, oh, okay, I worked out. And then it comes back again and then it goes away. And you should go, but you, it's, 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 it's an imposition. And one day, God forbid, you wake up and it's a root canal and you can't even move. And now you're running to find some emergency moment. And now your whole week is upended. It would have been a routine procedure that would have taken a half an hour and an hour, let's say, of your time is now turning into like three days because you got to find somebody and you can't this and you can't, and it's your pain and, blah, 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 and finally you get it taken care so it happens. This is the difference between people that react to life and people that are proactive in life. This is why thinking vision is critical. It's not just so you know where to go. It's that you know how to now, now you have a reason to not waste your energy, to not waste your willpower. So where do you put your willpower? Once you know you got it, what do you do with it? So we've been speaking about this concept of neuroplasticity. Every time you have a thought, the thought creates connections. And every time that thought continues to be thought of at the same rate, at the same way, those connections go stronger. Let's just think about it just conceptually, right? If I am thinking, if I, when I, when I look at that yellow cereal box and I say Cheos, because my mom says Cheerios, right? Because the word is Cheerios again and again and again, and it's the same color. And it's usually in the same place in my house. My brain can look at that yellow box and go from Cheos to Cheeros to Cheerios to Cheerios to Cheerios to Cheerios because it's a similar thing that I'm seeing again and again and again. My little brain as a little kid is making these connections. And when I hear the word and I see the box, because it's big and yellow in the same place, and my mom is using my dad or my brother and sister is using the same word, Every time it's the same connection, it's the same connection. It's not a different connection, it's the same connection. If Cheerios would be yellow and then be green and then be blue, and we'd call it Cheerios, then we'd call it uh, Cocoa O's, and we would call it, you know, you know, Cheery Squares, and if every time it would change, you know how long it would take me to say Cheerios? It would take me forever. Because my little brain is like, wait, was that Cheerios? Wait, last, yesterday, the yellow box fit with the word. Now I got the word in the green box. And then I got the yellow box in a different word. And my brain is going like this and creating all these connections until finally after lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of time, then I could put them all together. But if it was clear and clean, it would be much simpler. The clearer and the cleaner the connections are, the easier it is for us to make them, reinforce them, and solidify them. So if I want to learn something, the more I can break it down to its simplest form and repeat it, the easier it is for me to remember it. At some point, I can't do it. There's a lot of research behind seven digits. I'm sure you guys have done the research on the seven digits and why numbers are seven digits. At some point, the brain, without using other techniques, can't remember an infinite amount of digits. Now, there's something else that's important. When a, when a brain starts to not only remember one thing again and again and again, but remember a sequence of things, what will happen is the brain will recognize that there's a sequence happening and the brain will create or emit something called myelin. And myelin is almost, if you can picture, 
your iPhone charger or Android charger or any charger, right? You have all the wires that are underneath it that are connected. And what's really bringing the current from the wall to your phone are the wires that are all connected piece to piece. That's like neuro connections in your brain. But around the wire, to make sure the wire doesn't get cut, to make sure that it goes quicker, I'm assuming, there's like a white, usually a white, thin plastic tube. So what your brain does is your brain, once it starts to recognize a similar sequence again and again, it actually creates a little tube, so to speak, around it so that it allows the sequence to go even tighter. Brilliance, incredibleness. Okay, so those are the two pieces we have to understand. Mile and sheath, right. Andy Boltax, rocking and rolling. Posting on the on the on the chat consistently. Right. And Richard knows exactly where I'm going also. This is great. I love I love being able to to be with you guys on this. Myelin basically says when you think of not one thing but multiple things in sequence, it's gonna get a lot quicker. Right. So because the way I come down to a breakfast table is a great exercise in this. Each activity at breakfast is its own neurological connection. The Cheerios, the, the, the milk in the cereal that my brain gets used to as normal, that that taste, how I move my arm into my mouth, which was a little kid I couldn't figure out and now I get. It's got all the different pieces to this, actions, tastes, knowledge of what goes, what doesn't go, bowls and spoons and cereals, and, right? In, and then put on top of it, because you consistent now, your brain knows I want and I need it. If it's, especially if it's a sugar cereal, you crave it. But you can literally come down now to your breakfast table, go from the kitchen all the way through finishing breakfast and not use your brain for the most part, right? We can literally have breakfast now and use very little willpower. Why? Because we've done something that is aligned with our brains. We have identified things and repeated them. And then we've connected them to a very specific sequence. So our brain not only knows exactly what this is, it knows exactly how to get there. That's why you can go to work in the morning, as we mentioned here before, and like sit at your desk and be like, how did I even get here? Not only does you, your brain know, get off on that exit, or that's your stop. Your brain knows that's the exit, that's the next street, that's the corner, that's your spot, that's the building, that's the elevator. It's the same thing. And as long as nothing changes, you can pretty much go into overdrive. You can be on the phone from when you get in your house to when you sit at your desk, have an entire conversation in which you're using almost all of your brain capacity. And if nothing goes wrong on the road, you can literally sit at your desk and have expended almost no energy mentally to get to your desk if you're not getting crazy about zip zabbing through lanes, if you're not gonna drive yourself nuts. Which elevator should I take? Oh my God, it's taking so long. If you just allow the morning process to go. Give or take the 10 minutes between traffic and no traffic. If you let your brain not try to control the traffic, you can literally go, I mean, back in the old days when everyone did this, go from your house to your work and use almost, that's an incredible, incredible part of our lives. It means we're going somewhere and we're not taking very, we're taking very little out of the well because you're going to the same place every day because you're doing the same thing every day. And herein lies how one grows. You grow from creating very small, consistent rituals. The reason why resolutions fail is because the resolution tells you where to go, but it doesn't tell you what to do to get there. So you then have to, you have to superimpose your willpower to like drive you there. But the, the, what, what you're doing is not natural. If you would look into the future and say, here's where I want to go and then do one little thing, but do that little thing every single day consistently, what will happen is your brain will start to understand this is what we're doing, create very clear connections. 
And then over time, because your brain knows how to do it, you use less and less and less energy. So if you have to go to the well of willpower every day, the greatest use of willpower is not to get somewhere. The greatest use of willpower is to maintain your rituals. Because you know that as long as I hold that thing on for long enough, at some point it's going to become automatic. If I pay attention to the way I get to work every day, if, that, if I'm paying attention and picking the right way and not just letting ways think for me, just watching it, at some point I can get to work with no brain power. And the more things that I can do throughout my day that is clear, that is a ritual, that is consistent, even if it's small, the more I'm going to hold on to that ritual long enough, I'm going to use my willpower long enough so that I'm going to superimpose my brain from not going left, but from going right now. So if my ritual now is when I get to the kitchen, I'm going to eat, I'm going to make a egg for breakfast versus eating fruity pebbles for breakfast. At some point, your brain's like, what are we doing with the egg? This is going to take seven minutes. Look at you crazy. Like it's busy. Come on, muffin, fruity pebbles. Come on. Hello, fruity pebbles. At some point, you got to hold on and fight the, I know it's late and fight the, I don't have the time and fight the, I got to take out the pan and fight the, I'm not going to be full until some point and some point, at some point, at some point, this becomes a new path for you. At some point, we begin to create a habit. And once that habit starts to form and it gets stronger and stronger, and because of a concept called synaptic pruning, as you stop thinking of things, it gets weaker and weaker. At some point, the fruity pebbles option will start to get easier to say no to, and the egg option will start to get easier to say yes to. And you've been using your willpower, investing in your ritual. And then at some point, what was taking you five units of energy to do that egg, it's going to take you four units of energy and then three units of energy. And then what's going to happen is you're going to wake up one morning and look yourself in the mirror and feel like you've accomplished something and you get so excited that the accomplishments is based on what you've done and not just some resolution that it's going to put some emotion into that, which is only going to make it easier. And you hold and you hold and you hold and you hold. And then at some point to make that egg is 0.3 units of energy. So now you've got the same bucket. So you've accomplished your egg and you've given back your energy. Now you get to do the next thing. This is how people become great. Stephen King was one, is one of the most prolific authors of all time. For those who have the book, we write about him. I know how many books he's written in his life. 50 plus books. How does he do it? 10 pages a day. Stephen King writes 10 pages every day. No matter what. If, even if they're garbage. Brent Franklin has said once that he doesn't keep his routine for the success of it. He keeps it for the routine of it. Benjamin Franklin didn't keep his, and if you know Benjamin Franklin, if you've ever read any of his biographies, he's the wisest of the wise. He kept his routine, not because it's successful. Leo, Leo Tolstoy once wrote that he doesn't write for the success of his writing. He writes because he needs to write. Right? This is how they do it. Jerry Seinfeld, one of the greatest comedians of all time. There's a great story where Jerry Seinfeld was at, at, performed and some young comedian opened for him. And the comedian asked him, like, give me the secret. And like, you know, Seinfeld, if you know anything about comedians, like Seinfeld's not like a very naturally funny guy. There are people that are funny. He's not like very funny. He's like scientifically funny. He says things that are funny. You can't see Seinfeld being a class clown. He's the guy who makes the smartest line, right? So he said to the guy, famously, he said, if you want to be successful in writing, he said, what I do is I have a calendar in my house. And every day that I write, I X. I make an X. My only goal is to never have the X stop. It means every day for my whole life I write. Every day, no matter what. Rituals. And then it conditions your brain. And then as you connect the rituals, you build sequence. This is, this is, we got more to talk about. This is almost right on 920. We got more to go into here, but this is the beginning of it. We're going to talk to more about linking. 
and how to make the rituals. And we did this earlier, but I want to review it now. But this is what, it's, what we're talking about. And this is what I want you to think about today. If you had to create a ritual for five minutes, that's based on what you're writing and based on where you're going, what would that be? And can you hold it? Because if it's small enough, you can hold it. And when you expend your willpower on that, that's a return on your investment. Like if you look at like an investment thesis, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, zero return. Habits, 100% return. Where we implement our, where we're going to put our willpower to the left or to the right will determine whether we become different or we stay exactly where we are. Okay, we'll continue this. Thanks so much for tuning. For those who want to come in live, remember, we are here every day on Zoom and on Facebook, Mind and Momentums, and then we're afterwards on YouTube, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Hope all is well. Have an incredible day with God's help. We cannot wait to see you again tomorrow.